Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. India has breached the three lakh mark of uh, daily COVID cases being reported. In fact, we are nearing a three and a quarter lakh cases every single day, and each one of us is hearing some of these experiences coming from our family, friends, neighbors, and people we know. Social media, news channels. Everybody is full of stories. of big war that is being fought against covid-19 and the helplessness in many cases yes we understand nerves are frayed tempers are running high but there is no option we have to march on we have to march on because we have to fight this together is there any way that one single person or a group of people like minded people can find this alone while others go in different directions no not at all what is required and what is the need of the hour is all of us to set aside our difference because this is not about us versus them this is about all of us being in the middle of a war and this war zone is the covid war zone where we have to we have to come to our senses sooner than later yes at times now we are attempting to reflect the ground reality uh, which the administration and establishment must take note of if we begin to count failures well we can count them uh, till the cows come home whether it is the state governments whether it's the central governments whether it is institutions whether it is uh, courts we can continue to find out fault and try and put everybody in the witness box and have a case going on against them but is that going to help our problem is that going to help find a solution ladies and gentlemen today is the day when the supreme court took its cue from the high court and the delhi high court yesterday which hit the nail on the head which said and pointed out facts because delhi is the national capital it's not just delhi these cases were being heard in different courts across the country as far as uh, even sikkim but these cases really came out to open everybody's eyes and the supreme court today has had to urge everybody to declare this as a national emergency an emergency is not just what we saw in 1975 today there is a health emergency and we need to wake up to it tonight there are several oxygen trucks that continue to be stuck due to red tape or due to protectionism by some states well people of uttar pradesh or people of haryana or people of rajasthan their lives are they more important than peop- lives of people in let's say delhi in madhya pradesh in chatisgarh in tamil nadu is that the option that this country will need to take are we getting some brownie points on the chief minister's report cards because we will report less number of deaths in that state no ladies and gentlemen we have to rise above this tonight there is the aam aadmi who is facing the brunt of it all and when he decides to vent it out what is he faced with the arrogance of power the arrogance that he gets from those in power all the citizens of this country need empathy yes governments may need empathy too we are not saying that they are not overworked they are not uh, completely under a deluge of uh, the kind of problems people are facing but certainly the aam aadmi deserves some empathy tempers running ori nerves being frayed and the janta feeling aggrieved that is what we have reduced the great nation called india to tonight before i get into more details i want to start with the example of how a neta deals with somebody who's virtually risking the loss of his mother's life prahlad patel ladies and gentlemen presenting to you prahlad patel and this is what he told a victim of a family that was struck with covid 19 listen 
ऐसा बोलेगा तो दो खाएगा हम खाएंगे भी हमारी माता राम तो व्यक्ति खाने को पड़ी है बताओ क्या करना तो सीख रखो नहीं कोई मना कर रहा है तुमको मना किया है सर पाँच मिनट चला सर पाँच मिनट चला सर सिलेंडर बोलो इक्कीस घंटे में पड़ेगा तो पाँच मिनट सिलेंडर चला या तो फिर मना कर दो दो थप्पड़ दूंगा गाल पे अगर ऑक्सीजन मांगा तो इज दिस वॉट वी रिक्वायर एंड दिस इज कमिंग फ्रॉम अ यूनियन मिनिस्टर इन द काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर इज दिस वॉट वी डिजर्व वेल टू नाइट द रियालिटी इज हिटिंग अस हार्ड डिस्पाइट द ऑक्सीजन व्हील्स बींग सेट इन मोशन द फैक्ट इज द शॉर्टेजेस कैन नॉट बी डिनाइड जस्ट अ लिटल वाइल अ गो One of the biggest hospitals in Delhi, Sir Ganga Ram Hospital, has said that it has only four or five hours of oxygen supply left. Yes, the cries are going out. And listen in to the SOS from a small hospital in East Delhi, Shanti Mukund Hospital, and the CEO, who feels helpless because there are hundreds of patients who need oxygen, and he just has no solution for them. Listen in. to sk sagar ceo of shanti mukund hospital we we are hardly left with any oxygen now we have a cancelled we 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 have requested our doctors to discharge the patient whichever can be discharged whatever cylinders are there we are trying to put them on the icu bed the all those things because ultimately they are post critical and there could could be accidents also 110 patient on oxygen how many people are uh, on ventilators and icu also? there are about 12 patient which are on ventilator and wipe there are there are uh, 85 patient which are more than 5 liters per minute oxygen supplies people there are other people there also there are there cancer patient there are cardiac patient and ultimately uh, it will be very 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 deplorable condition very un- very unfortunate condition we probably you see we as a doctor we as a hospital we are supposed to give life if, if we cannot give them oxygen even what is the situation the patient comes to the patient will die patient patient will die So, sir, any any help you have got from Delhi? We we no, they are they are trying to help, but there is no oxygen, sir. There is no oxygen. We know this. We know everybody knows it. Even government is trying to help us, but but ultimately, oxygen is to be generated and to supply it. That's the frustration of a man who is. being absolutely helpless and truthful that there are cancer patients cardiac patients covid patients and doctors are supposed to save lives but they have no option because they have no oxygen to begin with not to talk of medical shortages in in supplies of pharmaceuticals and drugs and on the other hand while we are hearing some rhetoric on helping each other some people saying that at least but look how it ends up in complete bickering listen in to delhi chief minister arvind kejriwal ye bahut badi aapda hai is aapda mein agar hum sare log haryana punjab tamil nadu gujarat pashchim bangal isme bat gaye to bharat nahi bachega इस वक्त हमें एक दूसरे की मदद करनी है हमें भारतीय बनना है हमें इंसान बनना है वेल चेयरिंग अ हाई लेवल मीटिंग द प्राइम मिनिस्टर टुक स्टॉक ऑफ द सिचुएशन सीकिंग रैपिड इंक्रीज इन द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ऑक्सीजन द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑल्सो आस्क ऑफिशियल्स टू फाइंड इनोवेटिव वेज टू प्रोवाइड ऑक्सीजन सपोर्ट टू हेल्थ फेसिलिटीज As states expressed obstruction at several places the prime minister asked the administration to come down heavily on people who are causing these uh, road blocks in fact amidst all the bickering there was one chief minister who stood out this man navin patnaik the chief minister of odisha always known for giving measured responses in a crisis today he said and called on the prime minister also 
called on the Delhi Chief Minister and offered logistical and supply of oxygen to all states that he could help. Patnaik also reached out to Delhi Chief Minister and said that he will try and ensure. That's the spirit we need, ladies and gentlemen, and that's the spirit Chief Ministers must provide. We can't be pointing fingers. We don't have to be part of the problem. We have to be part of the solution as demonstrated by Odisha Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik. And that's the legitimate question that I want to ask tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Is political bickering costing India's mission oxygen? Should more chief ministers and leaders of political parties be coming forward to help each other rather than be involved in confrontations 24 by 7? That's the question and the debate. India mission oxygen is the debate on the other side. You're watching the news hour at 9. Debate number one on Times Now. Super Prime Time. And joining me tonight on the panel is uh, Mr. Gaurav Bhatia. Uh, he's the spokesperson and uh, senior uh, advocate uh, of the Supreme Court. Uh, he's spokesperson of the BJP. Also joining me tonight, Dr. Anand Ranganathan, author Harish uh, Hirani, uh, director of CSIR, CMERI, uh, on this panel. Dr. Suman Siraman, political analyst, Riju Datta, spokesperson of the Trinamool Congress. And my first question tonight goes to Mr. Jasmine Shah. Vice Chairperson of the DDC, uh, also the spokesperson of the Aam Admi Party. I want to ask you, Jasmine Shah, what will it take for centre and states to come together and find solutions? Because there have been many, many uh, faults that have been found. Ke ye nahi hua, wo nahi hua. And, and I'm not saying there is any one, any one party that is responsible for this. Most chief ministers are in a tight spot and best thing to do at such a time is to deflect the pressure on somebody else. But Jasmine Shah, isn't it time that we all came together to find solutions rather than confrontations 24 by 7? Navika, I think the question that you're asking today is absolutely the question that is confronting the entire nation. And this is exactly what Honorable Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has put a call out because we have seen what has happened in the last two days where a couple of states and today even Rajasthan, earlier it was only UP and Haryana that decided that, uh, you know, national consensus uh, doesn't matter. Uh, we will decide uh, which plants will supply what oxygen to where rather than the central government deciding. And today we are we folded our hands and said that let's work together as a country. We are Indians first. I am not a Delhiite first. I am an Indian first. You are not a Haryanvi first. You are an Indian first. And we have to work together, plan centrally, like the way central government has assigned quota, and work together. If there are extra resources, extra beds, extra medicines that Delhi has, we will offer it to you. So we are glad today that after that call, uh, Mr. Naveen Patnaik has reached out. The central government has also... Uh, stepped in and ensured that no state government holds supplies and that is indeed the only way we will find a way out of this crisis. The last two days have seen, uh, you know, absolutely abominable scenes in, in the hospitals of Delhi. Even today, hospitals are crying. Why? Because even today, Haryana stopped its supplies. So we are saying this is not the path we ought to take as a nation. We will not come out of this crisis unless and until we think as Indians first, allow the central government to plan and execute as per plan. Why is it that central government has assigned a quota to Delhi of 300 metric tons of oxygen, but yesterday only 180 metric tons reached? 200 metric tons of uh, supplies were hijacked by the states that were producing it. So that cannot be the way we can progress and come out of this crisis as a nation. Well, uh... That's, that's very well said. Uh, and, and Dr. Anand Ranganathan, I want to ask you, quota setting up by the uh, center is something that has been accepted by the Aam Admi Party. Why can't more states follow the same example and at least, at least allow a central war room to operate? And in this case, the central war room just happens to be the Modi government, which is taking these uh, coordination calls. And 
yet despite the allocations if uh, uh, the kind of uh, requirements that are there and allocations that are there if they still don't reach states who are they supposed to go to yes good evening navika no i think jasmin makes a very pertinent point but the problem is that you know this is a dynamic situation quota can only uh, help you as much because delhi sees uh, especially right now we seeing a huge influx of people patients who coming from outside delhi so uh, what if that quota is uh, very quickly overrun this is a very dynamic thing people have to come together and unite as jasmin says because navika uh, this says there's nothing worse than this this is truly a unfolding tragedy right before our eyes and i repeat after masks and vaccines it is oxygen that is saving lives its need is way more urgent than the other two because it is a matter of life and death and seconds count a few questions need to be asked from the center and the states both our daily production navika of medical grade oxygen is 2200 metric tons it is a fact that the oxygen shortage of this magnitude was not felt during the first wave it is a fact so the question to be asked is did those in charge think the second wave would not be as big as the first and if they thought this what were the reasons for them thinking this did they not anticipate that the second wave could have been much larger would be much larger than the first given that this has been the case for every country that has had the second wave and therefore we would have needed much more than 3200 mg of medical oxygen to get us through the second wave the center now says the requirement is 7000 mg but then again what has made them come to this figure do they know when the peak is going to be what if the requirement is 10000 mg the issue has to be muddled and in fact unfortunately has been muddled by the fake news of us exporting medical oxygen when in fact we had exported industrial oxygen and that to only 0.4% of our yearly output of 2.19 million metric ton the scare mongering fake news has already been withdrawn by one portal but that does not absolve the powers whose responsibility it was to predict the medical oxygen requirement for the second wave and to keep enough as a buffer on top well, of this we well, have logistical very... issues now just 10 seconds more you know one state hindering movement of oxygen to another this is totally unacceptable i repeat we should be having at least 10000 mp production every day and even that estimate is intelligent guesswork as well yesterday we saw navika 300000 cases that is true figure would at least be five times that because it is dependent upon testing the more you test the more you find and the more cases there are the more among them would be requiring oxygen it is a cruel tragedy to not be able to add this oxygen to the needy one so you know i i think the politicians have to do one thing put yourself in the shoes of the family of the patient who urgently need oxygen to survive but there is none think what they must be thinking feel what they must be feeling perhaps then you will understand the urgency well so so let me tell you you've raised the pertinent issue of uh, what was the government doing did they not know that there was a second wave coming uh, not many people remember but on january 7th on february 2nd on february 21st february 27th uh, the health ministry sent out alerts and advisories to various states where the numbers were going up and these states included maharashtra kerala chatisgarh west bengal in the first round in the second round uh, also uh, some of these states were sent uh, these advisories and then more uh, uh, states were added kerala punjab madhya pradesh tamil nadu gujarat chatisgarh were all added and more advisories sent uh, and and so on even jnk and west bengal and then on the 23rd of march uh, there was an advisory that was given by the ministry of home affairs pretty much underlying and this was to all the states across the country pretty much underlying that there was a wave that was uh, on its way and every state needed to get their uh, testing and other other uh, details ramped up but i want to ask you dr suman siraman every state comes out and blames the center either these advisories have not been given the kind of attention that they deserve to get or there is just so much mistrust that if the center sends you an advisory you as a state will not consider it important to look at it and when things go out of hand then the easiest thing to do is don't fight corona fight modi okay uh, navika i know that uh, the objective is to try and protect the central government i am state governments are equally at fault there is no issue i am not getting into that blame game at all two or three things that i want to point out one this shortfall of oxygen it may whether it is a production issue 
or whether it is a distribution issue or a logistic issue, the end result is the oxygen does not reach the mask which the patient is wearing. So this is one, we need to look at it as a long-term problem, which is not going to get solved in a day for two reasons. One, even if the oxygen was available, you need those cryogenic tankers to transport the oxygen, or you need a dramatic increase in the number of oxygen cylinders, which can then be transported by conventional means. So all of this takes time, which is where the planning comes in. And I'm not going to get into the blame game at all. Very importantly, there are two, three things that I cannot believe have not been done so far. How is there, in Delhi, is there a centralized helpline for hospitals to call for their oxygen requirements? Why is there no command center for hospitals? Hospitals are putting out tweets. Hospitals are going to the media and saying we have three hours and four hours left. Why can't there be a formal mechanism where the government gets in touch with the uh, oxygen manufacturers and suppliers and tells them, we will coordinate everything from here in on. That is the way it has got to be done. You've got each hospital calling the manufacturers, uh, I mean, the suppliers. But it is being done. Giving but it is being done. As Jasmine Shah pointed out, as Jasmine Shah pointed out, it is being done. The center is giving allocations. Yes, the capacities are Manita, low. And, and every state doctor. chief minister please, has come not around. Every state, not every state, every hospital must be able to contact a centralized oxygen helpline manned by the government. The government then directs the supplies to those hospitals. Interstate problems get solved because it's the center that... And what happens, and what happens to happens? states like Rajasthan? What happens to states like Rajasthan oh, which will not send their oxygen to Haryana? Send and what happens to Haryana me. which will not send, send their oxygen to Delhi? Why oh, Arvind Kejriwal said send paramilitary forces along with the money Sisodia sent that this afternoon. All but right. Navika, All right. That is Gaurav Bhatia. Gaurav Bhatia. Gaurav Bhatia. You have a slew of questions to answer. You you have to have a central control room, which should be the oxygen helpline control room for all hospitals. You have to take the transportation and uh, the kind of gundagardi. There is no other word. Gundagardi that is happening in certain states uh, where oxygen tankers are being stopped. And, and some of these also happen to be BJP ruled states. Gaurav Bhatia, when is that going to happen? And when are you going to get your ministers under control who tell people who are suffering, people who are suffering, maybe, maybe their nerves are frayed, maybe they are angry because their uh, uh, family members are, uh, you know, hanging between life and death. But the fact is, no minister has the right to tell them, Kya gal par do thappar dunga aise bologe to? What is going on, Mr. Gaurav Bhatia? So, Navika, let me start by the first uh, question that you raised, that no minister whatsoever has the right to be insensitive and to tell a citizen who is already distressed that I'll give you two slaps. And I very humbly apologize. And I say that this should not be done and this is not acceptable behavior. Second, uh, you also showed a clip of a doctor and he had tears in his eyes and he was saying that we have not been supplied oxygen and we are telling the patients to be discharged. Now, I would only say that doctors are like Hanuman for us. And if Sanjeevani is oxygen, then they are the ones who will protect the patients. And supplying oxygen is our responsibility and duty. And when I say our responsibility, I mean the central government as well as the state governments. And therefore, Doctors should only be focusing on saving human life. But uh, on the oxygen part, I would like to just tell you that today also the Prime Minister was having a meeting to ensure that all state governments get adequate supply. Tomorrow also there is a meeting where, you know, there would be a three-layer meeting and the Prime Minister would be actually looking at all the arrangements that have been made to ensure that oxygen reaches every state. He will also be meeting the representatives of the companies that actually manufacture and produce oxygen. And he will be also having a word with the chief ministers of the state. The point that I'm trying to make is very simple, that this is not the time to just blame the central government. Rather, 
the uh, you know order of the delhi high court sheds some light how the central government has been playing a very proactive and positive role to ensure that oxygen reaches the i i'm 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 sorry i'm sorry gorav bhatia at this point let's not let's not pat our backs let not let's not look at this issue uh, as as something that we've uh, uh, you know done very well there is there is a lot of problem yes the prime minister the prime minister is holding meetings but there is there you, i i want you to i want you to answer will the bjp take action against any chief minister who is stopping the supply of oxygen and interrupting supplies to other states to try and keep it for their own what is the action that you are going to take and i don't care whether they are opposition states or bjp states what is the action that the center will take navika i will start by a very affirmative and straightforward reply and the reply is this that if the empowered group constituted by the committee headed by the prime minister has allocated oxygen to a particular state that oxygen has to reach that state and nobody can stop it and action will be taken against the people but now four five quick facts one aam aadmi party no 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 no, no. I, i have to get in harish hirani can i can i make my point tabika harish only study sir I'll only take thirty seconds if you're kind. All right, thirty seconds. All right, thirty seconds. Now, my first point is Arvind Kejriwal himself thanked the central government, and he said, "When a truck of oxygen supply was stopped, the central government intervened." Second, if oxygen, we all know, our oxygen supplies are very important. The so-called farmers, when they are stopping these trucks and uh, you know the containers from reaching. why the political parties like congress and aam aadmi party silent third chatisgarh is to also supply oxygen to madhya pradesh and it was stopped why should the hypocrisy not be questioned i think every state has to ensure that the oxygen reaches the destination that it is marked for and that is why i am saying there can't be double standard well i hope I hope these states and their leaders and and Jasmine Shah. I hope if it's Tikri border, then instead of a few brownie points, Arvind Kejriwal will appeal to the farmers not to stop these trucks. Not uh, let's them, not only do lip service and keep. Uh, uh, let's just uh, you know not keep the politics going. Uh, uh, you know what Gaurav Bhatia has raised is also important. Uh, also important. But I I want to get in one minute. I want to get in Harish Hirani, director of CSIR. I I want to ask you hari shirani you know oxygen supplies mission oxygen is something that you know is evident and public is crying out for where have we gone wrong i'll point out three things one is the oxygen is required like when you inhale you require oxygen when you exhale you don't require oxygen so kind of a continuous system which have been that continuously utilized with the cylinder i find there is a one of the major mistake if i don't with the, our uh, the breathing rate it will be easy to cut the 50% of oxygen but we are trying that there's no oxygen and there are simple mechanism to cut the oxygen demand by 50% that's the one major thing that the doctors get you need to get into the world second thing is that whatever we have been talking about oxygen cylinder and mostly people have been using that they utilizing directly oxygen cylinder with a mask that's what they call a volume control but many times when the covid lungs get really some sort of damage and it's kind of the membrane which is getting blocked now at the high flow rate whatever you put still nothing will come out that that you keep supplying very high oxygen it still the lungs will not be able to recover So there we require some pressure devices also along with that. So it's not only oxygen; we require assisted devices to revive that lung also. So this is another point. And third, coming is coming, coming that. But there are no hospital not- beds. There are no ICUs. Uh, you're saying you're saying individuals should not, uh, you know, sort of have uh, demand for it. But there are no hospital beds. There are no ICUs. There are no oxygen uh, beds uh, in in any hospitals. Uh, most hospitals are bursting at the seams. And are you saying that the demand that is coming from hospitals alone, which are crying, uh, are all misplaced demands? 
they're not managing it well the demand is just being created i i don't want to go to that side but i say many times because oxygen was abundant available and the cost of the oxygen was almost negligible like 15 rupees per 1000 liter of the oxygen so people were not thinking in that direction so the being an r&d lab we start thinking in all those directions and apart from that why do we require really cylinder of oxygen to be lifted or be transported even we have oxygen in environment every state can make oxygen appropriate now if we have a technology in every state that oxygen concentrator oxygen enrichment units can be installed so that already. that technology that technology should have been worked on between september and uh, uh, march uh not uh, begin yeah. to think about it right now when oxygen is uh, uh, you know is a cry that is being made but let me get in riju datta as well riju datta and jasmine shah i want to you ask you on the news are tonight yes there are problems you want to blame the center yes you can do so you can do so from now till 2024 and you'll still have lot more to say between 2024 and 29 as well whoever is uh, the prime minister at that point in time and in case you want to find a solution that works for people of india then you can also <coughs> cooperate now derek o'brien the you know media cell head of the uh, tmc has called the prime minister a con man i want to ask you riju datta is this the time to use such language and is this the time to cooperate sit together arvind kejriwal is saying hum sab bhartiya hain we are indians let's find a solution as an indian if you want to uh, you know abuse the bjp you can do so when we have the second wave under control riju datta it's a simple point people of this country are asking of political parties can the trinamool congress also do that please Navika ji first of all uh, you know i will start off with a positive point that today my honorable cm has declared that from 5th of may when the vaccine program will start from 18 and above every person every citizen and every resident of bengal uh, will get free vaccination on behalf of the state so that's a positive and thing to get- start and you know uh, why we are you, you you have said navika ji multiple times that all the states and all the states cm should cooperate but one more sentence need to be added that all the state cms need to cooperate and come together because the pm of the country has failed miserably but that sentence is nowhere there i will quote on 29th january 2021 our honorable prime minister gave a speech that was running continuously on every news channel and i quote exact translation despite doomsday prediction india defeated covid and we helped 150 countries now my dear doctor said about that you know there is a fake narrative about industrial oxygen i want to quote a senior level government official by the name sumita dora additional secretary of minister of commerce and industry who went on record and said last year uh, a decision was taken by the central government to purge industrial oxygen oxygen to manufacture medical oxygen why we had one year to prepare why are we in this situation it is you know ma'am i will tell you with all due respect talk you should notice you know chat me saying do you agree no, with riju datta do you agree with riju datta that the prime minister has failed the country and therefore the chief ministers have to come together will no, no will you agree with riju datta jasmine shah navika navika the fact that today individual hospitals have to knock on the doors of high court and supreme court to get their supply of oxygen shows that there has been at a level a major failure in the by the center as far as oxygen is concerned that doesn't mean that states do not have to the play their own roles in delhi the in delhi over the, the last 3 weeks the we have increased the number of beds from 6000 to 20 then i i want delhi, all of you all delhi of you to stand by as beds. i introduce as i introduce to you know people are looking not just for bickering and negative stories uh, gentlemen people are also looking for some relief of some a uh, good side of humanity and while i ask you the, i request Navi, you to Navi stand Navi by Navi. because i'm introducing two people a uh, one minute aap sun to lijiye aap sun to lijiye uh, i i am I am introducing ladies and gentlemen you just heard these people uh, who are going out of their way to actually uh, 
you know, find fault with each other. But there are other people who are standing by and these are the people who are doing something in return for society. And joining me tonight are Dr. Naveen Talwar, Senior Consultant with the Fortis Group of Hospitals and also Ashwini Shroff. He's a caterer. And you know what he's doing these days? He's just preparing meals for families who have been struck with COVID-19. And Ashwini Shroff is sending them free meals because there are single working people living alone in their houses. There are families where everybody is suffering from COVID and there is nobody to take care of them. Ashwini Shroff, I want you to tell our viewers and our panelists, we have every political party here, from the BJP to the Ahmadmi Party to the Trinamool Congress. I want you to tell them, is this bickering or blame game that this country requires at this point in time? Or is it really positive vibes, positive energy and the kind of help that you are providing? Hello, everyone. No, ma'am, these are the toughest times we are going through. So... Still, people need not only food, they need many things. They don't have thermometers, medicines, adult diapers, and no one is there. In fact, there's a hospital in Nangloi, there's no food for the patients. It's a central government hospital. I've been sending food there for 22 patients. It's like heartbreaking when people call up and they cry, you know. It's, it's unbelievable what society is going through in Delhi, especially. It's, it's like I never thought in my lifetime, you know, this will happen. I don't have words. I don't know. Anybody calls up, we try our best to provide whatever we can in every way. We are working 24 hours. A mobile is open 24 well, hours. We are not here to criticize anyone. Let others do it. It's time to pay back to the society. That's it. Time to pay back to the society. Would any of you like to salute this man? Gaurav Bhatia. No yes, Gaurav Bhatia. Uh, sir, to you, I just want to say that an indebted nation, you know, 1.3 billion people, salutes your courage, your determination, your dedication to the nation. And believe me, the kind of commitment you have shown as a young citizen as well as a politician, we will also not leave any stone unturned to ensure there is adequate supply of oxygen, medicine, beds, ventilators, and we'll rise to the occasion. I promise you. Let's hope so. Yes. Your spirit is... Well, uh, well that's, that's the spirit. That's the spirit. That's the spirit that India needs. And we are just trying to connect to Dr. Naveen Talwar. And let me just show you the visuals. In Pushp Vihar, in an area in Delhi, uh, uh, very much uh, right uh, uh, in our neighborhood, uh, you know, a group of people, including Dr. Naveen Talwar, are actually running a COVID care center where poor people, at the moment, just 68. The numbers may be small. But just look at those visuals. These people are being given food, shelter, social distancing and a roof above their head while, while they are fighting COVID. And Dr. Naveen Talwar joining uh, this broadcast. Uh, good evening, Dr. Talwar. Uh, you know, this is, uh, this is what people want. You know, they, are, they have their problems. There is no oxygen. There is no remedesivir. There is nobody to look after them. Uh, and, and there is a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, battle going out out there on which state is getting how much uh, and, and the political parties with their blame games. But Dr. Naveen Talwar, is it this or is it the positive spirit that's going to make us sail through these very, very tough times? Yeah, uh, Navika, thanks me. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, there is a big problem we are facing as of now. There are no beds. I've been working the entire day, day after day, to get people beds or get them in to any facility. There. Oops, uh, we've lost uh, uh, Dr. Naveen Talwar. Uh, wanting uh, to make a comment. Yes, Dr. Anand Ranganathan. Yes, Dr. Anand Ranganathan. 
Navika, a few minutes ago, you said a very pertinent thing. When I was talking about the prediction of the second wave, you said the center, rightly you said it, you, you said the fact that the center had warned repeatedly the states for preparing for, uh, uh, you know, contingency. But I want to ask from every panelist of every political party who is there, including the BJP, the Tridamul, the Aam Army Party, my question still remains unanswered. Show me one politician who said we require more than 3,200 metric tons per day of medical oxygen because a second wave is coming. You can say that, yes, a second wave might be coming, but the point we are talking about here is the availability of medical oxygen. Show me one politician in India who said we might require 7,000, as people are saying right now, politicians think we require 7,000 metric tons. My analysis says maybe 10,000 would be not enough. But show me one who said we need more than 3,200 metric tons and herein lies the problem. Has we anticipated the enormity of Jasmin the second Shah, wave? Jasmin Shah, Riju Datta, any answers? Any answers? Yes, yes. Includes the center. He said BJP included. I said, I said, uh, Dr. Raman, I said, show me one politician. And I'm asking Jasmin the question Shah. to BJP. Jasmin Shah. Jasmin Shah. Did Delhi anticipate? Did Delhi anticipate? One minute. No, did did Delhi anticipate? Be, no, no, let's be very frank. As a nation, be it at the national level or at the state level, we had no clue as to the severity of the wave that was going to hit us. Let me accept it. There's no two words about that. I, Having I, said Jackson, that... I applaud you for accepting examples, that. I applaud no, no, you. Let me, let me, let I, me I finish. I applaud you. As, if you look at international examples, it is the national body of scientists, right? In the US, it is the CDC at the federal level, which says what are the projection one month, three months and six months down the line. So I must say that over here that yes, if, if you say states also are supposed to predict, predict and project, absolutely, you know, they should try. But all right, all right, should yes, the Central correct. Scientific yes, Body right. should have advised, but certainly, certainly Absolutely. no state had imagined. We have been taken by surprise. There's no point in pointing fingers. We have to bring back the spirit of India. And the spirit of India is what Ashwini Shroff is doing, what Dr. Naveen Talwar are doing. We stand together. And bandho mutthi to lakh ki khul gai to khak ki. You know, it's, it's possibly a cliche, but the fact is we have to stand together if we have to survive and win this battle. So ladies and gentlemen, let's salute all of those. Each one of you can have a helpline. Each one of us can help our neighbors, our friends, people who live in our buildings. And that's the way India's spirit is going to survive. We'll knock this COVID off. We'll knock this second wave off because we're not going to get into a blame game. What we're going to do is to stand together and fight all odds. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me on the news hour tonight. Short break coming up on the other side is, of course, the Kisan debate and what's going on in the name of COVID.